It's the Community Ties Program with Alex Micas on Tiger Country 97.5 WTGR. Alex Micas with you for a Wednesday edition of uh, Community Ties as uh, back at it and very excited to be uh, sitting down and talking with uh, Detective uh, Sergeant Mike Burns from the uh, Dark County Sheriff's Department. It's a fair time right around the corner. Always a, a fun time, but a very busy time uh, for the Sheriff's Department. And uh, first, uh, Detective Burns, thanks uh, so much for coming back on the show. As uh, always, enjoy uh, having you on the program. Well, thank you, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, we thank you for reaching out to us because we agree this is an important time to get some things out to the the public just to be aware of, if nothing else. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I, I believe uh, a, a presser is going on right now over at the at the fairgrounds and uh, just sort of working out some things. You guys do this each and every year and uh, right. sort of gearing up for the fair. Right. Uh, and one of the biggest uh, things happening right now uh, is some changes with what happens with pedestrians and traffic flow, which is all, you know, safety related as well. But you know, we're concerned in a lot of different areas and try to do a lot of different things to make sure that that's a pleasant time for everybody. It is a fun time, but uh, it, it can be a nerve-wracking time uh, for, for families and friends. Uh, one, you were talking about uh, traffic flow and pedestrians. There's so much uh, volume over at the fairgrounds yes. when talking about people walking around and then also cars trying to get in the right spot. And uh, accidents do happen. Fortunately, in the last couple of years, I've been pretty fortunate and lucky. Right. But uh, in that time, people should just always be cautious and just sort of slow down. Absolutely. I mean, I know people's excited to get there. They're in a rush to get there. They want to be there and enjoy the things and take advantage of the nice weather that's forecasted. But at the same time, you know, making sure you get there. And when you are there, that you're still safe. I, I don't want to put out a negative and an annotation there or anything that the fair is not safe. It is safe, but it's the extended steps that we try to take every year uh, that just continues to make it safer for people. Also, uh, sort of d discussing that in, in the fair, you, you have that moment where you might be walking with somebody, more importantly your child, and um, they might run off and see something that they like, and then boom, you turn around and it's like, Oh my gosh! Right. And uh, your crew out there on the fairgrounds um, deals with that probably each and every day at the fair. It it happens on a regular basis out there where you have a child that comes up missing maybe for ten minutes or an hour or something like that. Uh, but the moment that we get word of it, you know, the action plan goes into into play and people respond uh, immediately to the area. We start closing things down so that people don't get out just to be cautious and make every provision possible that the child is found safely there on the grounds. And nowadays we, we have cell phones which are which are great extremely helpful uh, sometimes service though can sort of be uh, sketchy and then not everybody does have a cell phone and I guess where I'm going is it, it, would it be a good idea for, for parents or grandparents whenever you have a family you got kids out there to have a, a location or a, a meeting point Oh, absolutely. You know, check and check in regularly if the kids aren't with you. Uh, but, yeah, if they're with you, you get separated, have a pre-established place that you both know uh, that you can meet at. And then even with the olders, check in with them from time to time. And if someone does get in trouble out at the fairgrounds, uh, you guys have an office and you're actually set up with a facility uh, right next to the grandstand. That's correct. Yeah, you'll see the markings on the outside of it that says Sheriff's Office. That's manned by a full-time dispatcher that's there. You might find deputies in there from time to time. Uh, but they're also in contact with our office so that, you know, what may need to happen on the outside of the fairgrounds is happening simultaneously, whatever may be happening on the inside. Now, you guys also have a presence at the gate. And uh, you, we were talking before the show today, and you have this uh, binder yes. uh, with a lot of information um, uh, across the board and individuals that you're looking for, uh, missing juveniles that you're trying to find, and just, I guess, for an uh, individual who might have a question, they might have an answer in that binder. Yes. Um, we've got people that are we're looking at through Crime Stoppers that are on our most wanted. Uh, there's a, that book contains that information. Uh, adult parole and adult probation, which is local sanctioned people, 
uh, have people that they don't want to be at the fairground, or if they are there, uh, they have certain sanctions on them, like they can't be alone, or they must be with a certain person, or something like that, or the person that's watching them uh, through adult probation may want contacted if they're there, and some of them don't have any sanctions at all. So that's why we try to keep the resource book there handy, available, so that deputies have things at their fingertips that they can work through issues with very quickly. And I, I know in years past that there, there have been times and, and situations where folks have, have been picked up yes. um, just uh, from their presence at the fair. Right. Uh, and some of it's because maybe they're featured on, on uh, our Most Wanted and maybe it's just people that show up because, you know, they don't live here full time like they used to, but they want to come back. They want to enjoy the benefits of the fair and reconnect with their their social groups or whatever that they used to be affiliated with, but uh, that also brings back people to our area that may have un, uh, our business that they just hadn't kept up with and should have. And maybe there's a warrant on them or something. We, uh, we we talk about individuals being picked up at the fair, and, and those situations do happen, but I, I think it's also important to note that your group works really, really hard to make it the, the safest fair possible. Absolutely. So we, we don't just look at one thing. We try to look at the big picture and plan ahead well. And uh, also, uh, in, in sort of talking with other individuals about, uh, and, and, and talking with you too, uh, about um, landing individuals who might not be in the right place at the right time or uh, a concern, the public can sometimes be the best eyes and ears that your department has and uh, if, if someone sees something, they, they shouldn't be cautious in uh, uh, reporting it. Absolutely. I mean, there's a Crime Stopper number that they can call if they want to be anonymous. They can call our 911. They can call the regular dispatch number at 548-2020. There's a lot of options out there. Of course, they can follow us on Facebook. They can follow us on Twitter and keep up on things. And so even if you're on a mobile device, you can kind of be aware of things that are going on. So as uh, folks enjoy the 2014 Great Dark County Fair, uh, just know that the Sheriff's Department is there. If there is a concern, if there is a problem, uh, you can get in touch with them, and then they will be on the grounds. And uh, how many how many folks do you normally have um, out there uh, from time to time? Well, I know we've always got people working the gates. Uh, we've always got people roaming. Uh, and then they always have access to the deputies that are working outside of the fairgrounds as well. So putting an exact number down there is, without having the schedules, kind of hard. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's a good number of, of deputies and resources that are available. And then we have the other agencies. I mean, Greenville's right there in the area, too, all the time. And so it's a lot of agencies working together and a lot of eyes, uh, just like they're talking about this morning there at the fair, where a lot of people have come together together. Uh, through the agriculture or agency, the fair board or whatnot. Uh, so it's one of the key things is, of course, everybody's working off the same sheet of music. We're, we're talking with Detective uh, Sergeant Mike Burns as uh, the uh, Sheriff's Department in the spotlight today on this uh, Wednesday edition of Community Ties. Before we sort of wrap up our fair, fair talk, uh, anything else that you would like to throw out there before we sort of move on? Uh, just the more alert people are, the safer everybody else is. And you mentioned that the more eyes necessary uh, to make us more effective, that's true. Obviously, regardless of how many people we have working at the fair, uh, we rely a lot on what the people see and, and report it. So if, n there's nothing too small to report. We want to be aware of anything that looks suspicious or could cause anybody harm or danger. 11.18 at the time. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Is uh, more with uh, Community Ties coming up as uh, the Sheriff's Department in the spotlight today. Stay tuned. This is Tiger Country. The Community Ties program continues with Alex Micas on Tiger Country 97.5 WTGR. 1122 the time back here on uh, Community Ties is uh, excited to talk with the uh, Sheriff's Department as uh, Detective Sergeant uh, Mike Burns joins us on the show. And uh, we're discussing their presence at the uh, Great Dark County Fair, which is going to be starting on Friday. And... Um, We've been uh, talking a little bit about uh, individuals who are on the Most Wanted page and, and Dark County Crime Stoppers. And uh, just recently, uh, I guess the group uh, celebrated uh, something, that uh, a milestone, I guess you could say. Yes. And in, um, in captures. Yes. They just surpassed the, the 100 mark. Um, since it's been newly web-based, uh, 
you know, so they're they're really proud of that because the input that they've received from the community and helping them to help us has uh, just caused you know, a, a really good success. For, for folks out there that might not be familiar, Dark County Crime Stoppers has been around for a while. Yes. Uh, but uh, it was sort of um, relaunched in a way, yes. uh, like you had said, web-based. Right. And uh, it seems like since then, there, there's been some great success. Yeah, there has. Uh, we may come up with somebody that's uh, just recently committed a crime, uh, and it's kind of got a big shock factor to it, or it's affected a lot of people. It's a major type incident uh, and we've had success with maybe featuring them with maybe an additional specified amount of reward uh, tremendous results with that or it may just be somebody that we've been looking for for a long time uh, has been a crime that's substantial but maybe it wasn't as far reaching as the others it was maybe more isolated to impacting a small group but yet we're getting good results with that as well and and I think more importantly to talking with you during the break uh, people are really using the website, and they're they're submitting tips. Uh, you had mentioned a situation recently where one of the individuals posted uh, on the website through Dark County Crime Stoppers. They had 25 tips. 25 tips, yes. Uh, and that just means that the eyes are out there working for us, you know. And they're utilizing the resources that they have at their fingertips. The nice thing about it is, with it being web-based like it is, obviously through a smartphone, you can stay connected with things. You get the alerts uh, that's easily signed up for on, on the site. And, uh, of course, the social media aspect, people get busy and they look and they help us locate, which saves us a lot and a lot of time. Talking about social media, how big has Facebook and Twitter been in, in landing some of these individuals because I, I would like to think um, that's probably a tool that uh, has been able to provide uh, some some great results it has it has and in, even in some of the recent ones and some of them going back a little bit further you know people are around here may be friends with them and they're no longer in this area uh, may not be best pals or buddies and hang out but they're familiar with them or they may you know, hey, we went to school together, so they connected uh, just to keep up with each other, and they're aware of where they're at. And then also, I guess, in, in some regards, I'm sure, although it might sound silly, some of the folks that you, you're looking for are probably on Facebook. Absolutely. Uh, and we sometimes are able to utilize, utilize that, but if we're not friends with them, we can't maybe get as much uh, information about them, you know, so... Their Facebook may be a little bit more guarded, so people around here who do have affiliations with them have been accepted with friends, have obviously more access to information that would be important to us. DarkHoneyCrimeStoppers.com, and uh, like them on Facebook as uh, folks can uh, get signed up. And also, um, you mentioned a couple new features with uh, emails. Yes. Uh, you, you sign up and like us. There's There's features there that you can get alerts sent directly to you, either through Facebook or even through the site directly itself. All right, so some notifications. As again, we're talking with Detective Sergeant uh, Mike Burns, Dark County Sheriff's Department, in the spotlight today on Community Ties. Uh, one thing that we haven't discussed on this show that's uh, relatively new is uh, past crimes. Yes. Is, is, is uh, your group's looking for some information um, and, and trying to solve uh, crimes that have been out there uh, for a while? Yes. Uh, and that happens with, with maybe our cases or any case within Dark County. So if an agency has a case, they know that they can come to us, they can feature it, uh, and then there's rewards on helping solve those crimes as well. As um, we were talking uh, before the show, I had uh, asked you a question pertaining to the, to the jail, uh, and uh, someone had, had thrown this question my way, and I'm going to ask it to you. Uh, sometimes when getting online and checking out the jail roster, it, it looks like there's spots, but then you, you read stories or someone that you might catch through Crime Stoppers or wherever, they get moved to Mercer County. Mm -hmm. How does that sort of play out? Well, there's several factors to that. Uh, currently, we're having some maintenance done on our building. Okay. So that shuts down maybe a wing or a certain portion of the jail, so we may not have full capacity, and that can happen for various amounts of reasons. Uh, sometimes maintenance related. The other issue that's there sometimes is that you don't want to house certain prisoners with other, how, 
other prisoners that are housed. And that could be because of age or gender or crimes. Uh, and it may be because you know that this person doesn't get along with another person that could cause problems in the jail. So there's safety issues there as well. So and, if that's the case, you know, you try to avoid that. Interesting, but it, it makes uh, complete sense. Uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time here, but uh, before I let you go, go uh, Detective uh, Sergeant Burns, anything else you want to throw out there or maybe something that we, we should be talking about that we didn't? No, I don't believe so, Alex. It's just, uh, you know, we're always very reliant upon the citizens, and uh, there's nothing, anything too small to report. You know, the more that we know, it may connect, maybe not something that we're working on active, but it may mean something later down the road or may tie into another agency. Without question. And uh, always appreciate you taking time out of your day to talk to us. I know you're extremely busy, uh, but I like having you on the show and, and, and talking that. about a few of those things. And uh, uh, from uh, some of the happenings and what we discussed with Crime Stoppers, it seems like uh, we're, there's uh, some really good things going on. Well, thank you. We're trying to do our best to make sure that everything's safe and sound for the citizens so that they can go about their normal daily business, whatever, in a safe manner. Uh, we, we wish your group uh, best of luck and uh, also uh, see you at the fair. Thank you. We'll All see right. you there. All right. And that's going to do it for uh, Community Ties on this uh, Wednesday. We'll be back tomorrow. We're going to talk with the Dark County Agricultural Society as we sort of gear up and get ready for that big day, which will be the 15th on Friday. Dark County Commissioners will be my guests on Friday. And uh, I'd love to ask them your questions. You can send those in at uh, alex at wtgr.com. Up next, your Midday Farm Show. This is Tiger Catchery.